Girls, let's get started with our lesson 1.7 in reading. Our standard is the same that this has been for a few days now. The student will ask and answer questions about key details in a text that's read aloud or information that's presented orally. And what that means is, how do I ask and answer questions to better understand a story that is read aloud to me? And how do I identify rhyming words? Okay, we're still working on identifying the parts of a book. This is the what? Yes, front cover. The front cover is the front of the book. This is the what? Yes, back cover. The back cover is the back of the book. What do we call this part right here? Oops. It's the spine of the book. The spine of the book holds the whole book together and it's between the front and the back. The front cover has the name of the story or the title written usually up here. Sometimes it's really big. It has the name of the person that wrote the story and it has the name of the person who drew the pictures on it. The name of the book, the author, and the illustrator are usually written, well, not always the illustrator, but the title and the author are always on the spine. Sometimes the illustrator is as well, not as often though. Okay, what do we call the person who writes the story? She writes the words, or he. That is the what? Author. The author is the person who writes the story. Children can be authors too. What do we call the person who makes the pictures for the book? We call that person the what? Tell your study buddy. Yes, the illustrator. The illustrator makes the pictures for the book. All right, table of contents. The table of contents helps us find what page something begins on in a book, either the chapter or the story or a poem. So today we're going to read Rain. It's another poem, and we're going to read it today, and we're going to just let our finger follow those dots all the way over to the end, and we see that that page is 18. Rain, the poem, begins on page 18. It also tells us who wrote the poem. This is the author, Robert Louis Stevenson. Okay, when we read, we read from left to right. Then after that, you go to the next line under that, and you begin again, left to right. Now, you see I started at the top, and we're working our way down. Then after we read this one, we'll go this way, and then come back to the beginning, and start again all the way across, left to right. When we read, especially beginning readers, we track. We use our finger. We read from left to right. Then go to the line under that and begin again, left to right. We use a finger to help us keep up with the word as we read it. So that's the tracking finger that helps us keep up with where we are as we read because sometimes we have to think about a word and then we might lose our place. So. Use that tracking finger. Okay, I told you that we're going to read rain. Well, what do you think about? Where does rain come from? Hmm? When rain comes down, it comes from up above. It comes from the sky. Where does rain land? On anything that gets in its way. It lands on the trees. It lands on the ground. It lands on your car. It lands on you. If you're outside walking around and it begins to rain, it lands on you as well. What does it feel like if rain lands on you? It's wet, isn't it? It's like being in the shower. You just get wet. It's dripping all over you. What does rain taste like? Have you ever stuck your tongue out and got some rain on it? Hmm? And my last one, does it have a smell? Does rain have a smell? Think about that. Okay. Now, I told you that we're going to read rain. 
Why do we read poetry? We read poetry to for enjoyment, for fun. Okay? Let me get set up. Get myself ready here. a picture in my head of what I'm thinking about and that's called visualizing okay when I think about rain I think about walking around outside with an umbrella lots of people out there walking down the street holding those umbrellas what do you think about when you think about rain okay now let's read the poem all right, here's the title of the poem. It's written in really big letters. It says, Robert Louis Stevenson. He is the author. What did he do? Tell your study buddy what the author did. He wrote the poem. Illustrated by Ann Trainer Domingue. What did she do? The illustrator makes the pictures that's right so we have the author writes the words and the illustrator makes the pictures all right let's look at our focus questions what does the sky look like before it rains i'm sure you've been on the playground before or just outside playing and you look and it's the middle of the day and you think oh it's getting kind of dark out there you look up at the clouds and you see that it's sort of dark so the sky sort of looks a little bit dark when it's about time for it to rain. All right, what do you wear when it's rainy outside? Do you dress differently? Some of you may have some rain boots. You may have a, a rain jacket, a rain coat. You may even have an umbrella. So sometimes we need to dress differently when it's rainy outside. All right, let's read the poem, Rain. The rain is raining all around. It falls on field and tree. It rains on the umbrellas here and on the ships at sea. Wow, now I want you to look at this illustration. I see a tree right here. This person is standing in front of the tree. But I see a ship now. When I think about ships, I think about them being way out there in the ocean. And guess what? There are no trees around. Hmm. What do you think that means? All right. Now, we see that the person is dressed for rainy weather. He's got all the gear on. A rain hat, a raincoat, boots, and an umbrella. Okay. Let's listen and see. Well, I'm going to read it again. I want you to listen this time for the two rhyming words. It's a short poem, so I can read it over and we can figure out what the rhyming words are. The rain is raining all around. It falls on field and tree. It rains on the umbrellas here and on the ships at sea. Okay. Think about the two rhyming words. Tell your study buddy what they are. Yes, tree and sea. Do you think that's why they have a tree and the sea in the illustrations? Because that's what the author talks about when the author wrote the poem. All right, so we can visualize what we might see. That's what the illustrator visualized in her head before she made the pictures for this poem. Okay, now our uh, essential question today was, one of them, how do I identify rhyming words? 
Okay, last week we started talking about rhyming words, and we decided that rhyming words sound the same except at the beginning. The beginning sound is different, but the ending sound is the same. So that's how, how we identify rhyming words. All right, boys and girls, be listening for rhyming words. Maybe you could talk to your study buddy. They might be able to give you a rhyming word, uh, give you a word, and then you tell them a word that rhymes with it. Try that. That's your assignment, okay? Good job, guys.